Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial from the Flesh Eater Courts. Yes, we are back with the Grand Court of Delusion. We are painting the magnificent Royal Decapitator that Games Workshop have very kindly sent me early to build up a paint for all of you. And I'm very excited for this one because he's absolutely fantastic. I don't know what it is about it. It's just a very, very compelling miniature and I love it. So, <laughs> we're going to waste no time and we're going to jump in and we're going to start painting him. He has been primed in white scar, just like all of our Flesh Eater Courts. And the colour we're going to be using first is Targor Raid Shade. And we're going to be applying this over the top of all of his skin. Now, he helpfully has kind of a unique skin tone to him as befits a character. So you can paint him this way and fit him into any of your courts. He doesn't have to be done kind of like specifically to Morgaunt or Blister Skin or anything like that. He's got this lovely kind of off brown, which we're gonna be doing. But we're gonna start with the Targor Raid Shade and then we're gonna do something else almost immediately after. So we're gonna get this over the top of all of that skin and then once that's done, we'll come back. So with all that Targor Raid shade applied, but then I'm going to take two colours, Agrax Surf Shade and Griff Charger Grey. I'm going to use these over the skin at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with some Agrax Surf Shade. I'm going to apply this over the top of each kind of limb. So, and then we're going to wash the brush, touch off the water, grab a little bit of Griff Charger Grey, it's a little too much, and then we're going to apply this in there as well. Now that our Royal Decapitator's flesh is suitably, well, dead, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Saigal Brown and we're going to apply this over the top of basically all of his clothes. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Black Templar and we're going to apply this over the top of the hair. Just under here. And back here. Like so. And we're also going to apply this over the hair on the recently decapitated head 
Well, I don't know how recently it was. Seems pretty recent though. Like that. And we're also going to apply this over the top of the fingernails and claws. of the decapitator. So with that Black Templar applied, we're then gonna take some Fire Slayer Flesh and we're gonna apply this over the top of the decapitated head, as well as the skin still clinging to the skull on the top of the ax and to the hand hanging off his belt. So, with that now done, we're gonna take some wild wood. I'm gonna apply this over the top of the wood of the ax. like so. And we're also going to apply this over the top of this pouch. And so with that done, we then once again take some Agrax Earthshade, only this time what we're going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of any string or rope. We've got a bit of string up there. And a little bit of string down here. And then rope, we have in here, we have that strap going around his chest actually as well. With that done, we then take some skeleton horde and we apply this over the top of any bones. So we've got the skull up here. We've got the bits that are poking through his skin as well. that bit and this bit here and down there and at the bottom of the staff And with that done, we're then going to take Garagax Sewer. I'm going to apply this over the top of the soft wrap. Of the axe. So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors and we're going to apply this all over the top of the axe and the butcher's hook.
And with that done, we're then going to take a tiny little bit of Retributor armor. I'm going to apply this over the top of the, well, what would have been the axe's pommel, except there's a bone there now. Whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Volupus Pink. I'm going to apply this over the top of the tongue, the gums, like that. And we're also going to apply this over the eyes. With that done, it's now time to add another shade. And this is the one we've already done before. It's Agrax Earthshade. And we're gonna be using this to shade the metallics. And with that done, we're then going to take some Gore Grunt of Fur. I'm going to use this, not very much of it here. We're going to use this over the top of the Garagak Sewer. Just like that, just add a little bit of red into that brown. Not too much red, because we don't want it to be red red. Like that. And we're also going to use this over the top of his hood. Now, even though that Gore Grunt of Fur is still drying, he is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to take him to the next level and we're going to do this by adding a little bit of a layer and some highlights. And the first of these is going to be some thinned down Karak stone. And we're going to be using this over the top of his flesh. And with that done, we then take a tiny little bit of pallid witch flesh and we use this to highlight his skin. So with that done, the skin is all finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to his hood. Now we wanna add a bit of texture here, but we don't wanna spend too much time doing it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stip now what I've got is I've got a medium shade brush, a really old one, which I've snipped right off at the base of the uh, bristles to give us a really lovely kind of DIY stippling brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some Blood Reaver Flesh and we're going to get some of that on our brush and then into some tissue paper, we're going to stab the brush in like this, just give it a little rotate as you do until it's kind of like that sort of consistency and then over the top of the hood I'm going to do a little bit of stippling I'm 
You don't have to do this all over. Just do this in little parts. To add some kind of little islands of texture, as it were. By the way, we just want to add just a little something something to all that, all that brown. So that Blood Reaver flesh done, we're then going to do pretty much the same thing again, only much more gently with some Night Quester flesh. With that element of texture added to the hide, as you can see, all the way around, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Karak stone. I'm going to use this to essentially add a little spot highlight. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Typhus Corrosion and we're going to apply this in a kind of stipply motion over the top of the flat part of the blade. And the reason why it will become very clear Just a moment. Once all that typhus corrosion is applied and fully dry, what we're then going to do is take some scrag brown and we're going to use our stippling brush for this. But what we're going to do is going to use this a little bit more like a conventional dry brush. So we're just going to get most of that off like that. And then we're going to add some little patches of rust. here and there. Around the blade. And with that done, we then want to take a tiny little bit of Garagax sewer, not very much at all here. And we want to use this again in a very similar fashion, and this time using our small layer brush to add a little bit of extra darkness. And with that then done, we want to use the tiniest little touch of Deathclaw Brown. Not very much at all here. As you can see, we can just go straight from the pot. In small amounts, get most of it off. So with that all done, you should now have a beautifully rusty, horrible looking axe. So what we're going to do now is we're going to highlight it using some thinned down iron breaker. This is going to kind of give it that hint of former glories.
So with that done, the axe is finished, as is the butcher's hook on the belt. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a teeny tiny little bit of white scar. We're going to apply this over the top of the eyes and the teeth. With that white scar applied, we're now back to some scrag brown to highlight the wrap. On the axe. And next up, we're gonna take some screaming skull. We use this to highlight the bones. With that all done, we then want to take some flayed one flesh and we want to use this to highlight the skin on the head, the hand and the skull. And with that now done, we're going to finish him off by taking some blood for the blood god. And we're going to apply this around various different little areas. So we're going to start by applying some of this around the neck. Of the head. that. We're going to apply a little bit of it around the eyes. Not very much at all. Like so. We're going to apply some of this around hand we'll apply a little bit of this around the skull as well And then I'm going to take small amounts of this and then a little bit of it on the axe blade. Forgive me, but there's one thing we didn't actually do which is to take some thinned down administratum grey and use this to highlight those black details. We've got the claws, the hair, so with that our royal decapitator is now finished. I think he looked grisly as hell and awful and in all the best ways. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the base very quickly. We're going to take some skeleton hoard and we're going to apply this over the top of the bones. So we've got a skull just here. We're 
like that. Two heads there. But we do have a rib cage back here. With that all done, we're then going to take some Griff Charger Grey. I'm going to apply this over the top of this head. Here. And back here. That grip charge of grey applied, we then want to take some rattling grime and we'll apply this over the top of the rock. Oh, it's not a rock. It's a butcher's block. <laughs> Whilst we wait for that rattling grime to dry, we're going to take some black Templar. I'm going to apply this over top of the hair. Now that we're aware this is in fact a chopping block, what we're going to do is we're going to take two colours, Saigor Brown and Blood for the Blood God. I'm going to start by taking out a small bit of Saigor Brown and we're going to apply this like that over the top of the block. Then we're going to wash the brush, grab some Blood for the Blood God. Apply this in there as well. I'm going to wash the brush one more time. Touch off the water. I'm going to mix it all together. And with that done, we're then going to take Saigor Brown on its own. And we're going to apply this over the top of all the soil. So with his base now fully complete, our Royal Decapitator is now finished. And this guy's an absolute weapon. You should absolutely have one in your army if you're fleshy to court spam because you can take out some real heavy hitters with him and he's just, well, you have to roll properly for it. But he's also a lot of fun. He's very, very characterful and he fits really well with like the Crypt Guard. So he just looks fantastic. I'm really, really pleased with him. I think he's awesome. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you'd like to support me further, you absolutely can do so by heading to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like all of these wonderful, amazing people have done. And alternatively, you could become a YouTube channel member by clicking on the join button below, exactly like these fabulous folks have done scrolling up on the screen before you. There are so many of you out there that it really takes my breath away and I cannot thank you enough for everything you do as without you I wouldn't be able to keep making these Contrast Plus videos. And if you really like this video and you want to send me a little thanks just click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to make sure you stay up to date don't forget to click the bell icon. 
Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.